Welcome to this short skeletal structure tutorial we are doing today that is going to be looking at our rib cage and the structures involved with it. We are just focusing on the basic naming of structures here and identifying the key features. So as always, let's start with our directional terminology. First here we have an anterior view of our rib cage, so looking from the front of the body. Next we are going to have a parasagittal view. Now if I just draw a line down the middle of the body here, this would be a mid-sagittal if we cut here and looked from the side. A mid-sagittal plane meaning it's right on the midline. Parasagittal meaning it's uh, parallel to that mid-sagittal line but not down the center. Now that we've oriented ourselves correctly, the first thing we're going to notice about our rib cage is that we have 12 sets or 24 individual ribs and I've just highlighted them here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. So 12 sets, 24 ribs all up. These sets of ribs are going to connect posteriorly to our thoracic vertebrae. Now our thoracic vertebrae are the segments of our spine that have special facets on them to articulate with our ribs. So I'm just highlighting here these T1 to T12 vertebrae and our ribs are going to connect onto here giving us a quite a bit of mobility when we bend and flex our spine. Now seven of these sets of ribs are what we classify our true ribs and I'll just point them out on the picture and the key feature that distinguishes our true ribs is that they are going to connect directly to the sternum via their costal cartilage. So we've got them here and we can see that at the front, at the anterior, they all connect to the costal cartilage that goes straight to our sternum. Our next and last five sets of ribs we classify differently and we call them false ribs. False ribs meaning they are not connecting directly to our sternum. The top three sets, so the eight, nine and ten, are going to connect to the costal cartilage of our number seven rib. So eight, nine and ten, their cartilage connects directly to the cartilage of our number seven rib and eleven and twelve do not connect anteriorly at all. So they're classified floating ribs. So no anterior connection. So once again, we have those 12 sets of ribs, seven true, five false, with the last two sets of the false being floating. The next structure we're looking at on the screen here will be our costal cartilage. Our costal cartilage I've just highlighted in blue and it's going to connect our ribs to the sternum. Now the costal cartilage is hyaline cartilage and it's going to contribute quite a lot to the elasticity and flexibility of our rib cage and allow us to expand and contract our ribs when we're breathing and pop straight back into place. Well I shouldn't really say pop, we don't want our ribs to pop but they spring back into place straight after we breathe and that's partly due to our hyaline cartilage that we have connecting them to the sternum. And with that the next structure we're going to look at of course is our sternum. Now, the sternum consists of a few different features and we can see it here it has a few different parts and we'll see it on this parasagittal view as well and we'll talk about all those individual parts of our sternum now. The first one being the manubrium. The manubrium being the most superior part of the sternum that I'm outlining here and I like to think of it as a kind of diamond shape with the body being the next and largest part of our sternum. Once again I'm outlining now and the last small portion that we have on the bottom being our xiphoid process. The xiphoid process being cartilage in early life, I'm outlining it here, and later in life this xiphoid process will 
uh, ossify and turn into bone like the rest of our sternum. And just like with many of our other bones in the body, our sternum is going to have a few unique features associated with it. The first one being our jugular notch, which is located just here. The jugular notch being a small uh, depression in the bone that we sometimes refer to as the suprasternal notch, supra being above, sternal being the sternum. The second structure we will find being the clavicular notch, and the clavicular notch and the jugular notch being parts of our manubrium of the sternum, and they're just located here and here. The clavicular notch being the part of our manubrium that articulates with our clavicle, or more commonly referred to as our collarbone. Between the body of the sternum and the manubrium, we are going to find the sternal angle. So sternal angle there, and it's the joint point between these two segments of our sternum. The sternal angle is sometimes referred to as the manubrio-sternal joint and forms a symphysis, which is a type of cartilaginous joint. And the last structure or connection point we're going to see on the sternum is the xiphosternal joint. The xiphosternal joint being where the body and the xiphoid process meet here. And like I said, that xiphoid process is usually cartilage in early life and ossifies later in life, forming a synostosis. Synostosis meaning a bony joint. And just for reference, I've highlighted this parasagittal view of the sternum in orange as well, just so we can see it there. And the last feature we're going to look at is our intercostal spaces. Our intercostal spaces not actually being part of any structure, but just referring to the uh, space that we have between our ribs here. And there will be muscles that we have within these spaces called our intercostals. So we've got them all here. That's going to be all the bones and features we need to know of our rib cage. And I'll just point out on this parasagittal view here, just for reference, that we have our heart. So we've got our heart here and our aorta here and our diaphragm. The diaphragm being the muscle that separates our thoracic cavity from the rest of our internal viscera. And that's everything. I hope this video has been helpful to you. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.